Background music and ambience brought to you in part by Midnight Syndicate. Music for the imagination and the perfect musical accompaniment for the Dungeons and Dragons role playing game. <laughs> Due to some violent content, parental discretion is advised. In a world that is not what it seems, and where people are not who they appear to be, where puns run rampant through the streets, and it's hard to tell who the real monsters are. Three heroes fight to keep the world of Euphray from ripping apart, and to keep Tim and Terry from getting even more screwed. Now, let's join the Sir Thaddeus Treblecock, the Wild Magic Sorcerer, Malfader the Fallen Asimar Oathbreaker, and the half-satyr, half-halfling bard, McNastly, as they bend together in their enduring pursuit of A Fool's Quest. So, a whole bunch of dumb fuckery happened, and you guys <laughs> really? made, <laughs> made it to Satamar. Once you got to Satamar, Thad made the deal with the hospital. You guys met with Montague Brenhart. And you met with Manny Devi- or Manny Vadito, and you guys then went to the what's that round bar? The roundabout. That's what it's called. Okay. So you guys went to the roundabout, and then you met Born Sirius and Said Keck, and then you guys went to the collective. You took the donkey ride down from Sedomar to the collective where you met with the first group of people, which was the Accountants Guild. You met with Unia Debit, who got you guys the currency access and retrieval device, or is going to get you guys a currency access and retrieval device, where you can use your uh, debit card. And the then you also met with Bubba Tightlips, who said they were going to get the file on Thor Killen's vault and trade out information for you. Uh, if if he could, and enter in trade for a magic item, then Malfader had a date night with Planella, <laughs> where it was a fact finding mission. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and during date night, MC <laughs> Nasley stole the architect's key out of Planella's purse, and that is just a like a metal rod that you guys can use. So you had met with everybody from the Accountants Guild, but you had not met with either of the architects that were on the list or the security guards that were on the list, and you needed to go back to the Accountants Guild to get the information from Bubba Tight Lips. And then MC Nasley was scouting out a shop and had plans for after everybody went to bed. Am I missing anything? <laughs> You're asking us. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <clears throat> no, that sounds that sounds right. Okay. You guys go up to your rooms with the exception of McNasley, who stealth away and hid downstairs near the shop. M C Nasley. McNasley. You're uh, in front of the magic shop, correct? Yes. Yeah, so I'm gonna use greater invisibility and kind of scout out the area and wait until there is little to no one around. Yep. Uh and then from about 50 or 60 feet out, uh, I'm going to kind of peer into the shop and cast Animate Object Mm. on nine of the objects inside the shop. Yep. And so you cast that, and then uh, what what happens? Uh, The objects that it was cast upon, which is a long list, (laughs) but we got the, the Nine Live Scimitar, a Scroll of Alarm, a Scroll of Animal Friendship, a scroll of dawn, a scroll of healing word, a scroll of ray of enlightenment, a scroll of locate, locate animals or plants, a scroll of conjure woodland beings, a scroll of, and a scroll of sickening radiance. All sprout uh, either wings or legs, 
and uh, kind of become weird object animal hybrids and slowly make their way out of the uh, the shop. Yep. So <laughs> you just turn that shop into the sorcerer's apprentice, essentially yeah. speaking. And surprisingly enough, you do it in such a fashion at just the right time, and none of the three guards that patrol down this way see you do it. So those items leave the shop. Once they leave the shop, where do you have them go? I'm going to have them kind of go into a back alleyway not too far down the street and collect said objects, release the spell, and uh, go on my way. Okay. All of those magic items are in your inventory now. Yes, they are. Yep. Uh, I I believe you have three items attuned to you already, so if you want to attune that sword, you're going to have to unattune one of the other items. I only have one item currently attuned. Oh, really? Yep. The rest of my items do not need attunement. Oh. Yep. The only current attuned item is the Golden Kazoo of Intellect. Yep. And then now the Nine Life Scimitar will be attuned by morning. Okay. All right, so you go back to your room at Staples and crash for the night and cuddle up with your sword to attune to it. Mm-hmm. Yes, and for the Nine Lives Scimitar, this will be important later, uh, on critical rolls, the Nine Lives Scimitar uh, has a chance, a DC 15 con save, uh, if the person being attacked is under 100 hit points. If they do not make the save, they instantly die. Yep. <laughs> yes, and I'm nice. going to roll. It's 1d8 plus 1 for charges on that. Yep. I have six charges. Nice. Very nice. Because random rolling tables <laughs> is awesome. And now you're going to hand select all your items again. Yeah. Now you guys will <laughs> never have a shop ever again. <laughs> oh, yes, we will. <laughs> Half of this podcast is shopping. <laughs> I know. And now it's stealing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is crazy because you guys never spend any gold. No. <laughs> You're we're, just window we're shoppers. All, none of us have money. <laughs> we're all broke. No, we got money. I, I literally have like 200 gold. <laughs> we just like like going to the yeah, mall. We don't have a lot around. of money. We're not rich. <laughs> like, like I am so broke, and I don't know why <laughs> my character doesn't make money. Just go from town to town and hit, like, the Spencers and the Hot Topic. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Buy Look at all the black light posters. Yeah. <laughs> Buy something at one shop, return it to another. <laughs> <laughs> Giggle at all the adult items. <laughs> <laughs> or blush. Depends. All right. Uh, now that we're done shopping in this fantasy world, the next morning you guys wake up, you are going to meet Born and uh, Saeed downstairs at 9 a.m., to chat with them before you went back to the collective. I remember planning to meet with them, but I don't remember why. Born Sirius is the one who will escort you to the collective. So he's not with Gagme, but he was the one... That's right, he's one of Manny's... Yeah. Acquaintances. Yep. So he was escorting you around and showing you around playing tour guide. Okay. Um, I'm going to seek out Thaddeus first thing in the morning. A word, if I could? Yep, I'm doing the old man stretches, like in Game of Thrones. I was uh, musing on something last night before I went to sleep. This whole heist idea, aren't we above this? It seems kind of you know, like a lowbrow approach. We are, we are full-fledged Gabby members. Why don't we just request access to these? Well, we, can, we could request access to the Gagme vault... Now it's easy enough, but e- even the Thor Killin, the Thor Killin, I consider. I don't know what their rules are, like if the privacy of their customers is their number one concern. If requesting access would even, we can try. 
Well, I mean, it would I, save I a lot of time. In, I took into account the prospect of their customers' privacy and their integrity as a as an organization. But considering the magnitude of what these clues could lead to, if we if those books are actually in the vault and we find the information we need, this is a this is beyond personal privacy. This is a matter of whether or not this world survives. We can always we can ask. It'll it'll save time. If they just say, sure, why not, and open the doors, it'll be a lot quicker than trying to break in. But it depends on their views on privacy. They might feel that keeping their customers' secrets is more important than any anything else. Yeah, it's just, well, this, this whole thing just reeks of common thievery. Yeah, and it, it seems, doesn't, doesn't seems something, well villi- something the villains would do. <laughs> Good thing I'm not in here being I just stole a bunch of stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh McNasley's coming up to show you guys what he just got and you're like, that seems like something Bill hey just doing. He's like stuff. putting it back in his bag slowly. <laughs> Turns around. <laughs> uh, it was charity, yeah. <laughs> I bought cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm broke now. <laughs> More broke. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we can find whoever's in charge and just ask them for the key. And tell them it's a matter of. Well, I was thinking saving you know, the world. Worst they could say is no. And then uh, we break in anyways. Always that option, but if we could not have to do that, I'd be okay with that. Yes, I I'm not looking forward to try to getting past what the door sh- or the map showed eight doors that could be trapped and. Yes. However many traps are in each hallway between the doors, seven and, more than I care to deal with. Yeah, yeah. If we can get just let have them open the doors for us, that would be much easier. Uh, and with permission. Yeah. And we don't have to worry about getting caught. Exactly. So yeah, well, let's try that first, and then go from there. So, what was that guy's name? Uh, there in the Diamond Security Group, there was Marshall Lockjaw and Killian Brenhart. Yeah, so <laughs> Killian is the husband to Montague, and Marshall Lockjaw was the potentially the the person in charge that you guys would have wanted to talk to. Okay, well maybe we can appeal to his sense of a greater good. Yeah, try that first. All right. Well, then uh, I think we have some appointments to keep then today. Uh, Yep. So, McNasley, what are you doing while they're having this conversation? Uh, I'm going to be doing my typical morning routine of being a goat, kind of stretching out and not I'm just eating breakfast on the roof. This goat yoga. Well, there's no roof, but (laughs) yes. yes. I mean, there is a roof somewhere. We're in a a building. He goes up four stories to the top of a mountain. (laughs) I don't know what goats do. You could be fair mountains. <laughs> yeah, they are mountains. <laughs> you could go out to that like the top of the waterfall thing that comes off the bottom of the city. Oh, and I uh, I play my play my kazoo merrily. It's part of my morning routine and polish my new uh my new sword. Yep. yep. What, song, what song? Ooh. I don't know. I don't have one. You don't never have a morning get... song? A morning workout yeah. song. Probably just gonna let's, have to be let's never get gonna physical. give you up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did have one question. How long ago were, did we go to the World of Salune? Um, oh, yeah. We had that buff. that Yeah, that boon. It was, I believe... When did you guys go to see Salune? <laughs> was that before or after the Cat City? It was, it was before... Because you met the dirty hippies. Okay, so it's been longer than three days. Yep, it's been longer than okay. three Has days. Has it been longer than nine? No, no. Okay, no. So I've still got a couple days. Yep, I think you've got two days. So you want to find uh, is, Lockjaw? Is McNasley privy to their conversation? Uh, you missed that. You were out doing your normal shenaniganry. <laughs> but you can come back in. You know that everybody knows that you guys were meeting Boren and Sight at 9 a.m. at the... Roundabout? Roundabout. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Right, so let's go meet him. Okay. 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 All right. So everybody goes to the roundabout, gets breakfast, eats up, does normal shenaniganry. Uh, real quick, make your roll for your scroll. The scroll Ooh, roll. Yeah. 
Okay, the D6 was a four. Uh, four is the history of conjuration. So the history of conjuration is it, it essentially you read a point of history that talks about the, the random workings of magic. This is one of those things as far as like role play, it pops up, but it doesn't really give you anything right. specific. There's not really any specific knowledge. It's just like this spell was discovered by this magician on wherever, but it doesn't detail the spell. It's just, just random history. Just those really cool Jeopardy questions. About yeah, you. exactly. Here's a fun fact. Lame. Good to know. And if we can find a tavern that does trivia night. Yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday uh, night quiz bowl. Okay, so Tonight's topic, <laughs> conjuration magic. If it can't murder something, we don't need it. Fuck that shit. Uh, do you have a story you haven't told that you'd like to tell to your helm, or do you want to make the roll this time? Oh, let's see. Considering I'm horribly unprepared right now, I'll just make the roll. Okay. Let's see. What was that again? Well, you don't need it now. You'll you'll make okay. a roll when you enter combat. Okay. And okay, so born. That's when he makes his worst rolls. I know. <laughs> yes. If we enter combat, we haven't done a lot of that in a yeah. while. We so. best. I got shit to kill. Yeah. Have, yeah, we haven't fought since the uh, robots yeah. in the one you guys little have, village. You guys have avoided combat like three times, yeah. which is good. I I I think that is good. Uh, it's a thing. It is a thing. Now that you guys aren't like getting XP from murdering stuff, <laughs> you're like, we can avoid this and yeah, still level up when we need to. <laughs> uh, clever way to promote the uh, main quest line. So Boren uh, comes up to the table and he's like, Milfeeder. I have letter for you. Yes, a letter. Yes, it came addressed to you. It came to my room. I give it to you now. <laughs> Why does he sound like a really shitty vampire? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know I, if, have... I don't know if you've noticed, but our voice acting is not great. <laughs> yeah, but he wasn't a vampire before. No, he, sounded... he was a Russian man. It's They're kind of the same. Yeah, I mean, Romania. Same. Wait, is it an actual letter? He. Oh, my God, it is. Yes. <laughs> What's to say? What to say? He might not want to tell you. Well, I guess. I guess actually, that could be in character because you don't do voices. <laughs> yeah, I've, the man of a thousand voices that all sound exactly the same. So uh, Malfader reads it uh, quietly to himself uh, for a moment. Being that letter's like six fucking paragraphs, it'll be no longer in a moment. You definitely have too much time in your hands, dude. <laughs> I didn't write that. <laughs> okay. Who, who, who's it from? Is it signed? Yes. By? Uh, looks like the TW Coalition. TW? What the f- Is that correct? Uh, I think so, yeah. yeah. T- okay. So, yeah, signed Warmest Regards H, with a period, dash, the TW Coalition. The TW. Any useful information in it? Well, let me just go ahead and read it up here. Most honorable Malfader, champion, champion of the just. Of the just. I have heard of your ventures and current change. Although your current companions are misguided, selfish, and destructive, I beseech you to embrace your new form to its fullest. You don't know me, yet I dwell in every shadow. We have never met, but I have peered from every waning tree. I, the herald of the absolute truth. Morality, the deceiver, propagated by the corrupt and the fearful to suppress the power residing in all of those worthy to rise, worthy to change. These concepts only live in the light of existence, but they are not the truth, venerable Malfador. The absolute truth is that there is only the light and the void. The light of existence holds the power to pierce the darkness, however, the void holds the overwhelming power to surround and contain the light. It seeds itself into existence. Existence 
never infects the darkness. Thus, the void is the true dominating power. Ponder these truths and you will find them self-evident. Observe your compatriots and see how volatile their good deeds are. Note how many are hurt, and what actual justice do they save for their own self-interests. If you have interest in seeking the truth, in hearing more in order to truly liberate you, to allow you to be more genuine, send her to go to Captain Murphy and address it to H of the Coalition. Warmest regards, H, the Coalition. Te- is there anything important to our current storyline in that? From from the meat and potatoes of the letter, it is reaching out to Malfader because they know that he has gone. He's, he's become a fallen. fallen. Yeah, they have, they have a okay. dark side, and they're kind of a fan. And they're trying to have him come away from his current companions, which is alluding to and, yeah, gag me. For one, and whoever uh, wrote that is a cunt for saying that. <laughs> and they're saying we're destructive. I'll show them destructive when I drop a fireball on them. <laughs> I'm going to hit them with ten kazoos at once. <laughs> You're just going to throw kazoos at them? That doesn't no, I'm going to animate the kazoos. Oh. oh, yeah, we decided, we figured out last time that... Yeah, the alakazoo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that spell is super dangerous. Alakazoo. Would you like to come with me now? We can head down to the collective. Did uh, did you happen to see who gave you this letter? It was one of the Aaron boys. Aaron okay. boys? Why, why would the Aaron boy write you a letter? <laughs> why are there so many boys named Aaron? <laughs> <laughs> who is this Aaron? It's a family of boys that deliver letters across the world. <laughs> they are known throughout the world. Yes. Their surname is Aaron. This was Joshua Aaron. He's a thirsty thirsty. <laughs> Okay, and scene. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you guys, because I'm speeding this along at this yes, point. Yeah, let's let's go with it. You oh. guys eat your breakfast, you hang out with Boren and Saeed, you guys have great meaningful conversations. Then you take the donkeys down the path to the collective and get to, where, do you, where did you want to go? Back to the accountants? Did you want to stop at security or did you want to go to the architects? Let's go to security first. Okay. And just talk to... Yeah, that was the guy that I made the deal with with the... No. No, you no, guys he have was only, uh, an accountant. You guys have only gone to the accountants. Okay. You went and you met with Unia, who offered you guys debit cards. She's getting you set up for those that they'll be ready today. Then you uh, talked to Bubba Tightlips. He said he was going to get the file with whatever access to whatever items he could for Thor Killen's vault for you. For a magical item. And for a magical item, yep. And then you met with Plan Yella, but you already stole Plan Yella's stuff. Uh, key. key. All three of those people were from the Accountants Guild. You got Plan Yella super trashed, so she's hung over and not at work today. Got it. Just Great. It. Okay. I thought we were actually going to have to go and still meet with her, so it didn't seem suspicious that her key disappeared, and then we didn't show up for our tour. Oh, I thought the whole purpose of getting her smashed was to... No, that works. <laughs> that works out yeah, better. Yeah, your thing's better. Cool thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Surprise, your thing is better than ours. Huh. Weird. Mm. Yeah. Well, I didn't create that thing. You guys did it. <laughs> I, I, for some reason, just un- that's just what it. You, that's what would happen to you. So you're like, eh, it's probably yeah, you. I just thought you guys had logic behind your shenanigans. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Happy accident. What gave you that concept? He's new here. Oh, you poor deluded little man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go meet with uh, you, ju- Lockjaw. And security. Yeah, and it was just... uh, Marshall Lockjaw. Marshall Lockjaw. Yep. Yeah. And Diamond Security. Yep. This- you said he's in charge is this pretty tit- much of security? Yep. Okay, yeah, is so let's go meet with him. Is this or is his name Marshall? Yes. Okay, good. Marshall Thank Marshall. You. Marshall. It's Marshall Marshall. Marshall Lock Marshall. Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go meet with him and just say, hey, open the, all the doors so we can do the gag, work. gag me thing. Have you guys explained this to McNasley yet? Yeah, over breakfast we told you we're just going to ask for en- okay, permission cool. to then go I'm going to bring up the fact that it's incredibly suspicious to... Ask for access, and we don't get it. Then br- somehow someone breaks in. Well, can Just they, gonna say, we yeah, have they got to prove it was us. Oh, uh, I'm sure they'll know. Yeah. <laughs> so it should be one uh, or the other, but you can't 
ask for access to something, then steal the things you asked for. They're going to know you stole it. I, I know it's been like two months since we played last, but also you guys remember... Certain, it's confidential information. Certain factions only had certain pieces of information. So there isn't one person that right. can just mm-hmm. go access every place. So even if security let you into the doors that they know or security agreed to not arrest you, they still wouldn't be able to give you oh, they wouldn't, all access. They wouldn't be like, okay, yeah, we'll give you permission to do this. Yeah. Go talk to Rick over there. Yeah, they're not accounting to they're not have them turn off all of, their stuff. Yeah, they're not in charge of the guilds. It's like three separate, we also completely can't, separate. Okay. Yeah, we three also completely can't separate put guilds. put out the information that the world's in danger to just everyday people. It's confidential information. That's why we were supposed to do it. We can't talk about it. Seems like a terrible idea to trust us with this information. <laughs> that is our boss's problem. <laughs> Way to go, Chuck. <laughs> but, yeah, we can't tell people why we're doing it or do it after asking for it. All it right. has to be secretive. Now, you guys yeah. can go meet with Diamond Security and get them to give you their their portion. I just oh, wanted sure. to yeah, l- yeah. remind yeah, you guys of stuff yeah. you already well, know. We're still going to cover our Plan B uh, basis. Sure. And, of course, my plan is still to absolutely fuck shit up. Yeah. Which you guys already have the architect's key, so mm-hmm. that, that is part of that's part of something. But, like, no no security guard ever would have an architect's key or right. would have any control over the architect's guild. Because mm. they're not architects. I guess I didn't realize they were that separate. I thought they were still, even though they're three separate guilds, there was still, like, a head boss who was in charge of everything that we could appeal to. No, checks and balances. That's why the that's why the collective is so high security, really hard to get into vaults cuz checks and balances. Gotcha. So this uh this Marshall uh what's his face? Is he Marshall? over the entire Marshall Bar. collective even though they're all separate units or is he just no, over he's Diamond just Security? Diamond he's just security. Diamond Security. Okay. He has nothing to do with the other two. Yeah. Imagine there are three kings of the collective. He's the king of diamond security, but cannot control the other two gotcha. kings. He's not really a king. He's only a marshal, right, obviously. Right, right. Marshal, marshal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that. let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't have asked, though. <laughs> I knew what I walked into when I asked. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, off to diamond security. Diamond yep. security. Okay, so... Boren takes you to Diamond Security and drops you off and, again, does not want to go in with you. Fair. He lives here. He's got to see these people all the time. <laughs> He's like, no, nah, I'm good. Yeah. Okay, so I take it he has a uh, like a secretary or something that, that meets us. Yeah, so you guys get to, that, get to there, and you actually see walking into the uh, building uh, a couple of people standing around. It, the Diamond Security is a very bare room. There are pamphlets and stuff on the wall. As well as some, like, you know, like the recruitment centers that have those giant military posters on it that are trying, like, hey, recruiting gets you this. It looks like that. It's it's like walking into a National Guard office. They've got <laughs> nothing on the floor <laughs> but, like, pamphlets and, like, really right. painfully. Uh, what could the National Guard do for you? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> there, yeah. So so you see those, and you do see a few people chilling around just, just chit-chatting. Okay. One of them sees you and, and says, hello, how how can I help you guys? Let's step forward, um, chest out, head high. I'm here to see Marshal Lockjaw. Ah, he leans over to the side and notices your cloaks that you guys are still wearing mm-hmm. and says, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you're, you're with Gagme? Yes. Ah, I, I uh, assume that you probably stopped by the local office and talked to my husband then. Oh, ha, shit. Yes. This uh this is this is Killian? Yep. Yeah. So ah yes, yes we did. Yeah, he extends a hand. I'm I'm Killian. Very nice to meet you. I am Malfader Bromroyo, Sir Thaddeus Treblecock, and McNasley the Bard. He extends hands to shake with all of you guys. I shake his hand. Your husband was a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> the goat's a liar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My my husband is very eccentric, but very endearing. I'm I I love him. So he's very knowledgeable of many things. He is very very knowledgeable. That is very true. Why don't you guys follow me back this way and we can chat while we get back? You you said you need to speak with Marshall Lockjaw, correct? Yes. You have an appointment or just stopping by? Mm, yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh, let's head back that way and we'll see if he's available. 
So he starts to walk with you guys and says, so what brings you to the collective? Important uh, gag me business. I'm a little leery of spreading some of the details of such. Ah, are you here to access the gag me vault or the other vault? <laughs> um, kind of. Thing yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure yes. Montague. A little bit of this. Yeah. A little bit of that. Yeah. I forget this was uh, Montague's. Yeah. Make perception rolls real quick. Or insight, I guess. Insight rolls. Nat 20. Ooh, roll it again. You're going to know all kinds of shit. Not in that 20. Okay. 13. All right. Um, 17. Okay, okay, dang. So, yeah, so you guys all, all while you're walking, getting his line of questioning, you realize that probably other Gagney people come through here, and he's probably trying to vet out if you guys are the ones that Montague has talked to him about, or if you're just... Random, random gag me people guys. trying to get into well, the gag I me mean, ball. Uh, the mace that he gave, or the hammer that he gave me, has slung my waistline. Am the I, one that Montague gave yeah. you. Yeah, and my golden kazoo is right in the middle of my chest. Yeah, yep, yep. So, but he makes those things while he's at work. Montague does. Oh. So, yeah, so he, Killian doesn't he may really not have seen them. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Yep. So, well, fuck. Yes, we're but, yes. trying to access both. Yes, we had a very enlightening conversation with your mate. Oh, very cool. Yeah, mate. <laughs> Fucking weird way to put that. <laughs> I say that well, in he's, character. He, <laughs> <laughs> so. Wait, he's 17. How, you're 8, 17, 18? He's probably like 18 now, maybe 19. Yeah. So he just keeps having birthdays. Seems like. He's <laughs> <laughs> 26. I don't know what the fuck's going on right now. <laughs> so he's, he's raised around rich people, but he's still socially awkward. <laughs> yeah, and he's trying to sound fancy, but yeah. he's. <laughs> I mean, you tell me when you were 17, 18, you didn't try to say something to sound cool and it sounded really I stupid. I don't think I said the word mate. No, at all. not that specifically. <laughs> From like the age of ever to now, I don't think I've used it in an actual sentence to talk to someone. What's up? How's your mate? <laughs> it's perfectly normal, like in Australia or in yeah. What's up, mate? <laughs> there you go. Oh, man. Okay. <clears throat> now. Montague, or Montague, when you guys met with him, had told you that the first door to get in had two spells on it. You guys remember that? Okay. Nope. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember what the spells were. Or spells. If he told us, and but he, I remember didn't he being, give us scrolls for yeah, because we spell magic. No, I no, have spell magic. He has. Yeah, I don't have dispel magic, but McNasley does. Yes, I think I do. Let me look at my spells. I hope so. You said you did. He said, I say lots of things. <laughs> he said the door has two spells and a basic lock. You'll need a lockpick set and then something to disarm the spells. Yep, I have dispel magic. I just checked again. Yep. And, and I have a lockpick set. And he told you that Perfect. most likely one of the spells was the alarm spell. So that is what Montague told you. Yep. <clears throat> yep, so I have everything it takes. I'm a bard, so breaking into stuff kind of the thing I do. Yep. So Killian continues to walk with you guys, but he doesn't walk very far. And he stops at a door and he knocks on the door a couple quick times and you guys hear a voice come from inside that says you you can enter Killian stops though before he opens the door and he goes to shake hands with Thaddeus one last time to say goodbye and he says it was very nice to meet you I think you could probably use this and in his hand is a little Ooh. piece of paper okay I will uh Stick it in my pocket I got for a letter? now. You got a letter? You're going to get a letter, too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we all revealed we'd all received a letter. And you'd had a letter, and you'd had a letter. I I'll stick it sword. in my pocket for now. <laughs> I'll read it after we're done talking to the marshal. Okay, cool. So he hands that to you, and then he opens the door with his other hand and says, If you guys need me, you'll know where to find me. Or, of course, you can reach out to Montague. Very good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Good luck. And you guys can go in. And the office is actually a really nice office. There are a couple of uh, moss plants that grow inside mountains uh, that are, yeah, just growing on parts of the wall and part of his desk. And he's got a couple of little knickknacks here and there. But you uh, you walk in and um, Marshall stands up to greet you and he says, Hello, how can I help you guys? Well met, Marshal Lockjaw. Well met. I am Malfader Bromroyal of Gagney. Ah, 
Oh, yes, I, I see the Gagney cloaks now. <laughs> Forgive me. Sir Thaddeus Treblecock. Marshal, Marshal. <laughs> <laughs> and McNasley. Ah. The renowned bard. What does uh, what's Lockjaw look like? Lockjaw is a... Um, he's a tortle. Uh, he's got... Oh, that was unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> he's a big, burly tor- tortle. He's, he's kind of old, though, so he's... Got like more wrinkles than than normal turtles that you've seen probably would the young spry ones that are out of their swamps like a master Ugwe looking kind of guy yeah yeah, yeah. yeah exactly He's, yep, there we so, go and uh, his his shells grayed a little around the edges but um but yeah he he is uh, got a big bench right behind him you know to accommodate his shell and yeah no that's that's pretty much that, do their shells go gray with age is that a- his does. His. <laughs> That's now a thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's just sun bleach from years of action. <laughs> could be that too. Years of action inside a cave gave him sun bleach? He could have just gotten here two years ago. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> I got a new job. <laughs> <laughs> what can I, uh, how can I help you guys? We were looking into a matter of pressing importance. And we understand that you may be able to help us with a portion of, uh, situation. Okay. And this is confidential information. Okay. Well, I'm not willing to share this with any of the rank and file unless your organization. No offense. No, that makes total sense. He gets up and slowly walks around his desk over to the door. <laughs> he gets up and slowly pulls the gun. <laughs> like, ah, shit! <laughs> and uh, closes the door behind you guys and says, uh, why, don't, why don't you take a seat on the bench over there? Take seats. Is there anything to drink nearby? Uh, yeah. Here, this, uh... Water? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was trying to think of what that, uh... Fresca. <laughs> Here's a fresca for you. Ah, thank you. Very, very Mouth popular. Mouth like, starts sweating, like, ooh. <laughs> Refreshing. Yes. <laughs> I'm not joining your church. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say there's a... Uh, sorry, were there any books or, like, shelves in his office at all? Uh, not on the walls or anything. The, the office is not too big for an office, but the, it does look like there are some drawers and stuff in his desk where there are probably books in there. No, well, I'm not going to be so bold as to look at <laughs> <in> the desk. <laughs> no, right. keep talking. I'm just re- checking all books yet. <laughs> all right, fine. McNasty just sits quietly. Okay. Not known much for conversation, just music. Okay. I'm going to see if I can take, make a insight roll to, to get a read on maybe a little bit of his background. Uh, just by what's around the room and by the way he carries himself. Okay. Uh, no. Okay, I got nothing. Okay. Seven. Um, but since as he's the head of a security branch, I'll assume that maybe he's uh, ex-military. Yeah, I mean that. That's what you assume. That's yeah. fine. You can assume that. I mean, with with uh, the way he looks, a wizened old turtle. It's hard for you to kind of get a read on his yeah. story. Uh, just so from out, of, out of the norm. Yeah. yeah. Yep. All right. Well, that was just a thought. <laughs> so I guess I will just uh, cut to the chase and get right to it. There is a situation unfolding throughout the entire realm, which Gagme has charged us with gathering information to hopefully end a possible threat to the entire realm. Part of this fact-finding mission we are on involves materials which may be stored in vaults here at the Collective. Okay. In the interest of avoiding a widespread disaster, I would hazard to say even a catastrophe encompassing the entire world we are on, we'd like to access uh, the vault of, what was the guy's name? Thor Killen? Thor Killen, yeah. The vault line. <laughs> access the vault of Thor Killen to see if there is literature within there uh, containing information which we vitally need to avert this said catastrophe. Well, I have... A very good past in history with Gagme, and I appreciate your situation. What I would say is, 
Even if I could give you full access, I only have access to a few of the elements of any vault. Really, less than, less than what the other two would when it comes to the actual vault, considering most of our stuff is uh, managing people trying to break into the vault. But, I can see why this would be so important to you. And go ahead and make your, was it diplomacy, persuasion? Oh, I thought you could say make uh, your... <laughs> Initiative roll, like, ah, fuck, man. <laughs> Shit. He slowly pulls out two Uzis. 20 crossbows <laughs> out of the walls. Like, Say hello to my little friend. Out of the walls. Like, well, this went not. That's a crap. <laughs> this went exactly how I expected. Uh. <laughs> slowly pulls a lever, and the bench falls. <laughs> All right, that comes out to a not natural 20. Really? Okay. Uh, yeah, the, it was specifically a 20 for persuasion to get him. So, nice. Congratulations. That is a really high persuasion <laughs> roll. Yeah, I mean, he's the head of a security yeah, branch yeah, for it an makes, entire it makes city. Sense. <laughs> I'm just some Joe Blow off the street, just, yeah. as far as he's concerned. Uh, he does have ties to gag me, so he says, I, I'll tell you what. I will promise you that me and my men will not arrest you for trying to enter the place. With every high security door, there's an alarm spell that goes on there. So, if you'd like, what we can do is I can send one of my men with you, one of my new recruits, and if the alarm goes off, they will let the other diamond security people know that it's it's, it's routine fine. maintenance. Yeah, there, there's nothing to worry about. And they'll keep you covered. We're all good here. Uh, how's how's things going with you? <laughs> <laughs> We're all fine here now. Thank you. How are you? <laughs> uh, so what's going on over there? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> a small reactor leak. Uh, give us a moment to lock it down. <laughs> so we won't we won't arrest you. And he he's saying this as he's slowly moving over to his desk and opening up a drawer and pulling out a file. <laughs> and uh, he sets the file on the on the table and he says, and. Uh, here, uh, let me let me look at my notes for Thor Killen's vault. And flips some stuff and he says Do you do you have the floor plan, the schematics for the vault? I show him my our map. Oh, this is this is great. Did you get this from the Architects Guild? Yes. <laughs> okay. Probably ch- I, be- I believe so, yes. Okay, roll uh roll deception <laughs> rolls. I'll Oh fuck! Is that me. also persuasion? No. I, Four, I only got a fourteen. I also got a fourteen. Oh. I got a twenty-two. You didn't actually say anything. I know, but I was gonna try and fucking help. <laughs> but I okay, can't. twenty-two. So you both said what you guys said at the same time, essentially close enough, and he does not believe <laughs> that, and he he believes you only to the extent that. Now he doesn't believe that, and he's kind of torn, but he doesn't say anything. He just says... <laughs> Squints. Hmm. Here's what I've got. In, on door number two, what on your floor plans there, it looks like you got to have a secret code word to get the door to open. And it, it's a little weird, but it looks like the passcode is green bean casserole. <laughs> I was hoping he wouldn't say potato salad. <laughs> I was hoping he would. Like, this is going to be quite a dilemma. Well, the this could go he, sideways real quick. He could say it all he wants. The amulet isn't attuned to him. Yeah, that's fair. And uh, is there anything else that I can help you guys with? That is. Uh, I don't know. I believe that's it. Well, uh, just to allow me to reassure you that we have the best of intentions. Uh, we do not mean to disrespect your vaults or. Anything in inside of Thor Killen's vault other than just the information need we need. to read a couple books. That's all we're after. Okay. Sounds good. We don't... Out of character. Do we even need to take the books or we just need to read to find this information? I don't want to jump that hurdle when we get to it. Okay. Yeah. If the uh, if a certain furry companion of ours decides to smuggle them out, that's on him. I like books. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so to move this along, 
Is there anything else you guys want to do with Marshall Marshall? No, I think we're done here. Yeah. Marshall Marshall's good. Don't we have to ask about the gag me fault at all? We're gag me. They yeah, just we let can us just right go, right, yeah. There might be sections of the vault that we might not have access to. I don't know. I don't know if there's like a top secret gag me like only Chuck and Questlinger might have access to. Oh uh, shit. Know. Okay. So you all are anything from you, McNasley? Nope. Okay. I was silent the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> Very impressed. Staring directly at him. <laughs> Those weird goat eyes. <laughs> weird. <laughs> <laughs> they lie you freeze up <laughs> you're like don't move <laughs> yeah, like, <sighs> alright so you guys uh, stroking my bag full of stolen things like, mm, <laughs> so he I slowly fucked. leads you guys out of his office and back down the hall to the main area and says this is one of my very very good new recruits his name is Squirtle <laughs> and introduces you to a uh, another uh, Tortle, who <laughs> is part he, of the Squirtle Squad. <laughs> yeah, he says he he can tag along with you, and when you're ready to go into the vault, he can uh, he can do that that thing that we discussed. Uh, we have to we'll make thing. one more stop. Just one? Or are you guys doing two? Yeah, we, have two yeah, more we gotta go talk to Bubba Tight Lips too. Mm-hmm. So we need to go to the architects. Three more and stops. Go back to what? we have to get our cards too. That's Man. with the accountant's guild if you yeah, guys wanted to. We, yeah, we can do that when we go talk to Bubba. Yep. And Unia will take you to the Gagme vaults for those yeah, just cards. So we can poke around. Seven more stops. Got it. Go. <laughs> <laughs> it's a we, full day, okay? <laughs> we're busy. Do we just want to send Squirtle to Thor Killens and have him wait there for us? Doesn't he have to take us to the vault? Oh, he does have yeah, to lead yeah, us to the vault. Gotta, Somebody's got to lead you to the vault. We don't know where it is. We just know what's inside. <laughs> we got a map of the inside of the vault. I figure at some point we would have found out where. Okay, fine. Follow <laughs> us, Squirtle. <laughs> we choose you. <laughs> <laughs> what Squirtle look like? A young, bluish, greenish turtle. He's kind of young, spry. He's wearing pants. Kind of young. I don't like that thought at all. <laughs> Of a turtle with pants. Well, not everyone's just... an exhibitionist like you, Mister Sater. Hey, man, do what I want. <laughs> All right, so on to the architects. Okay. So you guys come back out. Born is on the outside, and he's like, <laughs> "Are you ready to go to the next place?" Yes, we're happy here. <laughs> Very. Who cool. the fuck is that? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he looks over. He's like. He and he introduces himself to Squirtle. Introduces Sidekick to to Squirtle. Said. So, Said. Okay. So Boris, boring. Boring. Uh, boring. Young, young Squirtle here will be accompanying us toward the vaults. Very good. Uh, it's very nice to meet and you. I'll make sure I give him a reassuring nod. Very good. Let's go this way. And he takes you guys back to the Accountants Guild. All right. So you guys get to the Accountants Guild, and you know where to go to find Unia or Bubba Tightlips. It's kind of like a giant coffee shop, you know, but they had their own little areas, and you could take them to a bubble to have a private private conversation. conversation. Um, do we want to do Bubba first, and then Unia, because she'll take us to Gagme Vaults. Yeah, we all want to go to the Gagme together. Yeah. yeah, so let's hit Bubba hit first. Bubba first, and then go sightseeing. Let's hit Bubba. Yeah. Well, no, not... Fucking punch him. <laughs> not, not a thing we should do. No. Seems like a nice guy. Loosen those lips. Bah! <laughs> He's an accountant, not a gladiator. <laughs> you have a ring that you were going to yeah, yeah, um, give him? So Bubba, says, Bubba sees you guys approach. He's not with anyone, luckily. You guys have really good fortuitous timing. <laughs> and he sees you approach, and he stands up and nods his head to the left to motion, like, let's go, go to, to a, a bubble. bubble. And doesn't even say anything to you guys until you get into the bubble. And he says, "Oh fuck, I remember Bubble's I voice." I don't think he had. Okay, cool. A weird voice. He's like, "What up, guys?" <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what up? <laughs> no, I How's it go going? back, and he was like old Joe Redneck or something. Yeah. Uh, you, have to, you have to talk without <laughs> moving your mouth as much as possible. <laughs> Tight lips. 
for some reason I <laughs> for some reason I imagine Bubba tight lips as having these really fat lips, and I don't know why. <laughs> like Bubba Gump, Bubba Gump. Yeah, like yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I'm seeing. Like, just like I guess it's not really... Bubba Gump. It's just Bubba from Forrest Gump. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but like a really like like a <laughs> well, the Bubba Gump shrimp cup. Yeah, yeah, like a bass looking motherfucker. Like yeah. just <laughs> <laughs> some crazy anime. Yes. Okay, so you guys get there, and and Bubba's like, "What? Well, welcome back." Uh, welcome back, our sons. Yes, um, I believe we uh, struck a deal yesterday that we would like to conclude our business today. Yeah, yeah, we did. And he reaches into a satchel and pulls out a small wooden box and sets it on the table. Okay, um, I'll slide it over to Thaddeus and let him peruse it. Do you, so, do you open it up? Yeah. Or I'll ask what the. I don't want to open it and end up being like some one charge magical thing. Yeah. That we <laughs> turns needed. out it's a spell. Yeah. Okay. So I'll ask him what the, what exactly is it safe to open? What's in the box? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's safe to open. It's some samples from Thor Killen that you'll need to gain access to specific parts of the vault. It's his pubes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one is a blood sample and the other is a hair sample. Perfect. I know that one of them will get you through door number one, which is on uh, on your map that he knows now knows you guys have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> moving right along, there is a uh, main door that will take you into the main vaulted area that uh, is also known as door number one, and <laughs> and it will require uh, the hair specimen from. Thor killing for you to gain access to that. Jesus Christ, yeah. we've only got ways through door one and two so far. <laughs> only six more to go. <laughs> yes. Door one, I, my notes have like five things for door one. Maybe the other six are like just those swinging doors they have in the western <laughs> bar. We're just going to run go. through them. Yeah. Push right through them. Like the kitchen doors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They only put alarms on the first two doors. They figure if you get past the first two doors, there's no stopping you. Right. It's like, <laughs> eh, let them have it. <laughs> they want it bad enough. Yeah. It's fine. Ah, good job. Okay. So are we done here? Almost. I reach into my vest pocket and produce the uh, that ring of... Uh, I feel like we were going to cheat him. Yeah, but I'm thinking... He's such he, a nice I'm, guy. I'm sure he would have a means of detecting whether it's legit or not. Um, you don't work in an established like this, and then wasn't it just any yeah. magical item? Yeah, it didn't yeah. have to be super fancy. I but like fucking five hundred scrolls. We don't know that. Yeah, it's the uh, the That's ring of thunder resistance. That. So you pull out the ring, and Did he really pulls out he pulls out this wand out of his bag, and he scans detect magic on it essentially, and it flags, and he's like, "Very good. Is there anything else you guys would like to do?" <laughs> You said that the hair sample works for door one. Where does the blood come in play? I don't have that in my schematics, which leads me to believe that there is... Another door. A hidden door. Sweet. Or some kind of... Later door. spot. Some kind of hidden thing you need to activate with the blood sample. For every door that closes, another opens. (laughs) Shut up. (laughs) I was just looking for a setup. (laughs) That's going on an inspirational poster somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> MC Nasley. <laughs> picture of a goat. <laughs> no, no, just goat eyes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we got to go talk to the other chick to go yeah, to... Yeah, Unia. Unia yeah. for the debit cards. Okay, so you guys yep, yep. you guys are going to go speak to Unia, and you're skipping out on the Architects Guild for now? Because Unia will take you to Gagney's vault, not to... Oh, right. Yeah, not to Thor Killens. Um, how, what's, like, the, how far is the Gagney Vault from the rest of the guilds? Is it going to be way out of our way to loop back around to the Architects after we're done with the... No, not way out of your way, no. I I mean, some would say that we could get there in just a matter of two sentences. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Um, we're not actually fucking walking. (laughs) No, no, Diamond Security... (laughs) Live action (laughs) D&D! That's called LARP. (laughs) Ugh. That's fair. Anyway. I'm not running around your yard going, Lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! Don't they just throw, like, 
bags oh, of each bags. other. Yeah. You guys yourself. are making fun of probably our only listeners. <laughs> hey, <laughs> can we all be honest? We make fun of ourselves. <laughs> Moving along. We're we're nerds, but we're not those nerds. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Our listening numbers just dropped by half. Uh, yeah, good, good talk. <laughs> this was fun. Enjoy your okay. Ren fair, you fucking weirdos. <laughs> I love Ren fairs. <laughs> I still want to go dress as Doc and Marty. Yeah. Uh, all right. Moving Back along. on track. <laughs> That's great. Okay. So you guys, yeah, you you need to go see Unia, and then Unia, you'll and then the architects. Yep. So you guys go to leave the room and. That you remember that you had, had placed a, a, a note. Yeah. yeah, I remembered that halfway through our interaction with Bubba. All right, hey, so fair, I pull it out of my old. pocket. Okay. And yeah, I'm old <laughs> in real life and the game. So the note says that the second spell on the first door on the on the door to gain entry to the vault is a sleep spell. Good to know. I will let them let McNasley know. Because he's the one who's going to have to cast a spell. Magic. I might just take a fucking nap. <laughs> <laughs> have fun going any further. I have the rod. The alarm goes off and you're not sure if the alarm scared him and made him faint or the sleep <laughs> spell went off and knocked him out. All right. And here's probably a good spot for us to take a break. This concludes this episode of A Fool's Quest. Join us next time for a more fun and daring adventure. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to like, subscribe, review, and comment on your favorite platform to listen to A Fool's Quest. Print next time, that'd be great. That, I didn't write that. I know. No. <laughs> I know who wrote it. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. But I'm not supposed to. Yeah. Thaddeus doesn't okay. know who wrote it. You don't know me yet, but I dwell in every shadow. We have never met, but I have... <laughs> oh, what is that? <laughs> it's like purred. <laughs> <laughs> it's from a... It's, it's from a Hobbs! From no! Hobbs. <laughs> it's a love letter from Hobbs! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the person that wrote this, Heard? I know who you are, and you need and to we write are coming better. <laughs> <laughs> I have a particular set of skills. 